If you tell me you don't like panettone, the Italian Christmas cake, then I'll tell you that you've never had a true artisanal panettone. Panettone is synonymous with Natale. It is Italian tradition and identity mixed together with some sugar, egg, candied fruits, baked and beautifully packaged. Benvenuti a Ciao Bella. I'm your host, Erica Firpo. For the past 20 years, I've made my home in Rome, where I've worked as a journalist contributing to publications including Afar, Washington Post, Lonely Planet, and Travel and Leisure. I love sharing the stories of Italy's pioneering creators, and I'm bringing these stories directly to you on Ciao Bella. Every week, I'm joined by contemporary artists, heritage artisans, designers, culinary experts, innovative estites, and more. At the crossroads of evolution and tradition, the past and the future, they are working and creating to define and redefine 21st century Italy. Join me as we see Italy through their eyes. Over the years, I've had my fill of panettone and the stories behind it. According to historians, the ancient Romans feasted on panem triticum, a loaf of bread sweetened with egg and raisins, which may or may not have been a proto-panettone. In the Middle Ages, the Milanese feasted on three loaves of wheat bread at Christmas time, leading the government to issue an official decree that made all bakeries offer pan di shori or pan dalton, a sweetened wheat loaf, to everyone at a fair price. The 21st century panettone? It's the typical holiday gift, a gorgeous dome of sweet, soft, and aromatized bread that can give you bragging rights for the entire holiday season. In the spirit of Natale, I've rounded up some of Italy's best bakers and pasticceria owners for one very specific reason, to understand the legacy of this historic dessert and the role it continues to play in contemporary Italy. Or better yet, to give you a taste of panettone. Join me with Milan's very own Giovanni Giberti of Pave, Nicola Olivieri of Vicenza's Olivieri 1882, Rome's Giorgia Proia of Casa Manfredi, and Pierluigi Roscioli of Roscioli, and Ezio Marinato of the historic Panificio Pasticceria Marinato near Pordenone. Ezio, I'm Nicola Olivieri, and uh, I represent the fifth generation of my family company, Olivieri 1882. So we have a bakery, as the name said, uh, uh, since the 1882, so it's almost uh, 141 years. Uh, so I'm the head baker of the company, uh, and I create uh, all the recipe. Um, I continue to, I keep on to um, modify also uh, the, the recipe into a contemporary way. I've had the fortune of having your panettone, I think every year for the past three or four years. It's my family's all time favorite. Can you tell us just a little bit about what it takes to make a panettone? Or what it takes for an Olivieri panettone? Yeah, um, to make panettone is, uh, is very difficult. I think uh, it's one of the, the most difficult cakes uh, uh, in the bakery world. Uh, because uh, we have a lot of steps that we need to take care about. Um, for us, it's like our process uh, lasts for four days in total, uh, using just the natural sourdough, the lievito madre. Uh, so basically, we have uh, a team uh, which is completely dedicated to every step. We have a team for uh, lievito madre, we have a team just for baking, and a team just for, uh, for mixing the dough. Your panettone, like I said, has astounded my family. And more than anything, it's transformed me because I used to hate panettone. And I would never in my life, when I was a kid, when I was at my cousin's house, you know, I'm Italo Americana, I'd come to Italy. Anytime anyone said, Do you want some panettone? I said, No. Then I had your panettone. And now it, I mean, it's, it's kind of like my family, we, we get a bunch of panettones every year. And my husband hides your panettone because he doesn't want to share it with anyone. <laughs> First of all, you guys make, Olivieri makes a bunch of different kinds of panettone. I also know you guys make an excellent pandoro. Can you tell everybody the difference between panettone and pandoro? Yeah, surely. Um, when I say that panettone is very hard to make, uh, I need to, to be very honest that pandoro maybe is uh, it's more difficult than panettone. And that's also the, the reason why uh, there are not uh, a lot of uh, producers who make uh, Pandoro. Uh, we are in a few bakers that make Pandoro. Uh, 
and uh, it's like a, a typical cakes uh, from our zone because we we come from uh, near near Verona. On the idea of very contemporary company, you guys make different like it's not just one panettone or two like the salted caramel one you have a bunch of different panettone do you guys come up with a new panettone flavor every year uh usually it's like a couple of uh, new flavors per season so this year uh, we have uh, the new pumpkin spice and dark chocolate which is a very good one um we bought initially just for uh, the american market but also it's very good for in uh, in the European one in the European market too. So it's a well surprise also for this year. Panettone in the summertime, yes or no? We tried, uh, but it's very difficult to take care about because of the temperature, because uh, uh, usually in the last uh, few summers here in Italy, it's very hot. So it's very difficult to, to store. People yeah. ask me this all the time about panettone. How long does panettone last? How long can you have one? Um, usually it's like, uh, it depends by the fermentation. I have panettone here, for example, in my office, uh, uh, which is like uh, one year and a half uh, without anything, you know, without any preservative or nothing. Uh, because if you do a very good fermentation, if you take care of, about fermentation in a very good way, you, it, it can last, you know? Uh, you need also to, to store in a good way uh, and it can last. Of course, Erika, we are speaking about uh, if, if uh, we are going to, slice, to, to cut a slice of uh, this panettone, for example, in, the, in, uh, in our office, uh, it will be not very good uh, as, uh, for example, a panettone made uh, one month ago, of course, you know, because it's right. not so fresh like this. But I think, uh, you know, so when we, when we say six months, uh, it's like uh, for us, uh, uh, the, the limit of uh, a very good panettone. A mix of legend and history, the story of panettone has been told so many times and in so many ways. One charming tale tells the story of star-crossed lovers Ughetto and Adalgisa, madly in love but mismatched socially. Ughetto's family were obviously against the idea of their precious son marrying the daughter of a lowly baker, but he didn't care. In fact, he began working for Adal Giza's father, Tony, in his bakery. At some point, Ugetto got a little creative and started adding a little flavor to the bread, some butter, some sugar, some eggs, and eventually pieces of candied fruit. The baked dough burst out of its form, was a little bit burnt on top, and an instant holiday hit. Legend has it that Ugetto honored the dessert by naming it after his soon-to-be father-in-law. Panettone is beloved all over Italy, and in Rome, Giorgia Proia of Casa Manfredi makes one of the best. Probably everyone's favorite pastry shop in Rome, and mine, my stomach's favorite pastry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> my stomach thanks you so much. <laughs> and um, I, I, love, I love coming and seeing you just because you're, aside from the fact that your pastries are delicious, you are delicious too. Thank you. So I wanted to ask you, because I know every year my family cannot wait to get your panettone. So, I think uh, my panettone, our panettone, because the the work is a is a team. It's not own. It's a team. Uh, I think that our work is a very artisanal. Uh, we we put inside some love, and uh, I believe that. This is very important, the love for this work. And uh, we make this product only, only for Christmas. And the time is very teeny because uh, we work for 20, 21 days. And we stay in this laboratory every day, all day for, for this product. How many different kinds of panettone do you make? Uh, we make uh, four types. Uh, classic. The chocolate. Three chocolate. Yeah. Uh, raspberry and chocolate. Apricot and janduja. Ah, apricot and janduja. I think that's the one I haven't had yet. Interesting. And you make pandoro as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Which is classic. Delicious. Classic pandoro. Now, Wait, what's the what's how do you like to eat your panettone? I like it um, no 
normal without anything. So just a slice? Yeah. Do you eat panettone before Christmas? Yeah. And uh, for Christmas I I can um, give you some like suggestions yeah, on how to eat. Yeah. You you can you you can put on the uh, hot superfice. Oh, um, like a, a hot plate? Yeah. Uh, a hot pan? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, or like pane, like tosta pan, eh? No, termosifone. No? Oh, put it, oh, put it on the yeah. heater. Yeah. Yeah. That's very Roman. Yeah. And then you can you can cut a slice, and you can put uh, pastry cream, our pastry cream, or our zappione. That's my with favorite. a little spoon. Uh, it's a very amazing. That's to me very Roman with the zabaglione. Zabaglione, yeah. Oh my goodness. Mazzala zabaglione, yeah. Are there any other recipes? You can put on with uh, a slice on um, similar French toast. You can put a, a little um, butter in the, in the pan. In the yeah. pan, yeah. And you can you can fry. Just one like minute, one minute, minute, and that's it, according to me. Do you ever have panettone outside after Christmas? Yeah, for the the, the last the, the last year. The, oh, Capodanno. Capodanno. So, yeah, the end of New Year's. <laughs> end of New Year. Okay. But how about how about during the year? Like no, during the year, uh, no. I'm stuck with the 31 December. And then we make for Easter the Colomba. It's a similar panettone, but panettone stop the 31 December. We make 100, 200 pieces ma max for uh, 15 uh, ago, uh, in oh, August. Oh, Agosto, 15, yeah. the 15th yeah. of August. So 15th of August is a big Italian holiday. And you guys have, I remember you started doing this tradition of having Panettone for Ferragosto, yeah. because you were saying that during Ferragosto, or Ferragosto tradition is polo and pepperoni, so chicken and pepperoni, and then you made a little sweet tradition. Earlier when we were talking, you mentioned that you don't, for you, you don't think you need to have panettone all year. No. This is a limited edition summer uh, summer panettone, panettone estivo. We make this this year. We make um, um, peach, ah, and peach. Um, peach and uh, marzapane. Oh, peach and um, marzapan, marzapan, marzapan. Almond, almond. Yes. You did say something. You said that for you, your whole baking philosophy is also about. Observing and adhering, observing the natural cycle. Yeah. yeah. So that's another reason why. Yeah. Because uh, according to me, uh, the flour, the butter, the eggs uh, uh, have uh, a time during the year uh, for uh, recreate and the natural circle of the of this, this uh, ingredients is. Um, I think it is had to respect. My favorite panettone legend is the story of kitchen boy Tony, who worked in the courts of Ludovico il Moro, Duke of Milan. A sign was watching over the desserts baking in the oven. Tony accidentally burnt all of the Duke's Christmas Eve pastries. Quick on his feet, Tony scoured the kitchen and mixed up leftover dough with sugar and egg, candied fruits and raisins, filling round pans with the mixture and baking voluminous loaves. Ludovico was so impressed that El Pan de Toni became a court favorite. Say it with me. El Pan de Toni. Panettone. Toni's bread. If I'm going to talk about panettone, you know I have to speak with a Milanese baker. So I headed to Milan to meet Giovanni Giberti of Pave. At Pave, they take panettone very seriously, kicking off November with a panettone slice week called Fetimana. Giovanni, I'm so glad to have you talk about panettone because you and Pave are, for me, the uh, icons of, of panettone in Milan. Um, Thank you very much. And I, Thank I'm, you very much for having us. Do you have, uh, in the summertime, do you eat panettone? So in, in, the, in Milan, uh, Ferragosto is a little bit, uh, the city is empty, so everybody's going to, to, 
to on vacation. So we, we cannot make, uh, I mean, we can make panettone of summer panettone, but people is going to holiday. So it's not so much appreciated. But during uh, May, June or July, we also have uh, uh, some panettone slice uh, in the shops with uh, mascarpone cream or with uh, zabayone cream. And also we make sometimes uh, in our ice cream shops the gelato made with panettone. So it's uh, the like panettone it's is put inside the the gelato base. Pazza per panettone, right? <laughs> that's that's yeah. I never I never even had panettone gelato. Actually, you know that reminds me. I wanted to tell you. So growing up Italian American in the U.S., um, I don't know if you know this, but panettone is not really well received. A lot. Of I, I don't. I really didn't expect that. I mean, uh, what? <laughs> um, uh, I, I I I worked in uh, San Francisco for a year and a half, uh, and uh, with a pastry chef from 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 over there, and he made great panettone. And I also have a couple of friends who are making a lot of panettones in the U.S. and that they are so good. And uh, I don't understand why it's not so appreciated over there. I think probably I think... They, they they have never tried the the real the real one. I mean the I think artisanal that's... one. I think that they've never tried the real one. I think Panettone has had got a little bad reputation in the past because it was maybe a little bit more artificial, but also really stale. But you know, one of the things that I love about, I don't know if it's stale, but one of the things I love about Panettone, because when I was a kid, I used to have to have Panettone and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> And then the when I had a fresh panettone, I had what it was like not as sugary, um, but fresh and light. Like it was like it was and soft, yeah, yeah. I mean, the taste from uh, artisanal one is the uh, much different than the industrial one, and so everybody should at least try one slice of panettone, or real panettone, in the U.S. <laughs> what I loved what you uh, what you do at Pave, which is that your your bakery and your I mean, it's like a bakery place where you, it's it's bakery, but you can also have salato, so savory things, um, little cafe. But you had a what was it? Fettimana. What did you call that? Was so cute. Yeah, it's uh, like a week. Uh, slice week. The, the, it's like the the week of the slices of uh, the our uh, different tastes of panettone. So we have five different tastes. Uh, that we sell uh, for Christmas, and so in November every week you, we you can try one different slice, uh, so you can uh, decide what's your taste for a Christmas panettone. So I don't know if you've heard of uh, some people do Movember, which is when guys grow mustaches in November. Yeah. I like Fettimana. Yeah, is... it's almost the same. <laughs> <laughs> Just so everybody understands, Fettimana means week, and Fettimana is like a little play on the on the word slice and week. And that's, exactly. I, I, I got to try that Tonka. Um, so how many, when it, when it's not, when it's Christmas season, so December, how many panettone are you guys making and how many different flavors? So we make, we are making five or uh, six different flavors. And uh, this year we are going to make 7,000 pieces in this month from 20 November till uh, the 25 of December. That is amazing. Now that we have a pretty good idea about what panettone is and where it comes from, the real question is how to eat it. So I asked the bakers, what is your favorite panettone? I, I like you, I mean, like, like uh, I prefer the, the classic, the traditional panettone. My favorite after the traditional one, which is always on our family table, is the rum and, chocolate, and dark chocolate which is uh, very uh, amazing for me, honestly. Uh, just uh, warm up uh, in, in uh, one minute in, uh, in the oven, and it's uh, completely amazing for me, honestly. Okay, so just one minute in the oven. So basically a slice, one minute in the oven. That's how you like to eat it. That's it. I'm here with Ezio Marinato, a baker, a huge baker from just outside of Pordenone, and we're at Alma, Italy's amazing school, of culinary school. And I just discovered that Ezio knows a lot about panettone. So for Christmas, I, I asked him, what is your favorite panettone? Che cos'è il tuo panettone preferito? Sicuramente il panettone classico, tradizionale. Niente altro? Quello per me è il panettone. 
Ok, seconda domanda. Dopo Natale, quando ci sono avanzi, come lo mangi? Ma io cerco di non far avanzare il panettone, li faccio un numerato in modo che la gente lo mangi bello fresco, però se dovesse avanzare si possono fare delle belle torte, si tagliano a fette, si inzuppano e si mangiano delle torte. Perfetto, uh, puoi dirmi come si chiama il tuo, pa il tuo panificio? Panificio marinato. A dove? Cinto Caio Maggiore in provincia di Venezia. Perfetto, grazie. When I asked Ezio about leftovers, his response was pretty simple. Try not to have any. I'm sitting in the office with Pierluigi Roscioli, um, one of Rome's beloved bakers, and we're going to talk a little bit of panettone. So my first question is, il panettone ideale, come si fa? Uh, well, uh, I would say that there are two kinds of panettone, two types of panettone. The first one is the one that is made from the pastries, pastry makers, and the other one is the one made from bakers. So one uh, is uh, more like a mm, product uh, from a pastry store. So would you say like more sweet, more... Yes, exactly, with more aromas and uh, with more aromas and uh, with a technique that I would say uh, Rough, raffinated. Uh, like more refined, yeah? Yeah, refined. The panettone made by uh, bread baker, uh, consider that bread bakers uh, use the natural yeast all the years. This is the main difference between a panettone made from a bread baker and a pastry maker. So, usually the natural yeast that is the base of the panettone uh, from a bread baker uh, is uh, based on this element so this element is very important so you can you can uh, uh, feel or taste uh, less aroms but more the tenderness of the dough and the base of the ingredients. So only the butter, the, the essential oils from the orange peel and the citrus peel, and of course the raisin. Do you, um, when you at, at Natale, when you have panatone, how do you have just like a slice of panatone or do you like to put zabaglione on your panatone? No, I I eat like this, like bread. You I eat, eat like, like bread? It, yes, <laughs> like a slice of bread, yes. Are there ever any avanzi in your house? No? Of course, there are always uh, pieces of panettone that last, but uh, we use like, uh, we make crumbles and we eat with uh, with yogurt or with the milk, so we toss it a little, we make little pieces, we toss it and we add that the yogurt or in the milk and, uh, in a very traditional way. Wait, what do you mean in the milk? Like you t in milk, you take, so you, you heat it up and then you put it in the milk, in like in a cup, like in Tazza. Exactly, it's like a zuppa. That's what my <laughs> yes, like you, well, like you, you do with little kids. Too. <laughs> yes, you toast it and uh, preferably the day before, day in front, the day before, and then uh, you use like uh, breadcrumbs. Oh, that's really cool. Now, now but only my little uh, daughter loves it. Uh, she wants me to make uh, a sort of. Uh, Mm. Uh, French toast with me the with the panettone. How do you make the French toast? Oh, I just uh, I just uh, fried in the butter and I had I had a little bit of uh, maple syrup or honey and she did it like this. Oh, she likes it. Yes. Yes. So do I. I like it that way. <laughs> Giovanni, I've had your panettone. I've had a few of your panettone, and every single one has been amazing. What is your favorite kind of panettone? My favorite, absolutely, is the Milanese one, the classic one, because I'm from Milan, so that's the base for me. Uh, but sometimes I like also some uh, like chocolate uh, panettone too. Uh, even when I make uh, everyday panettone, I mean Milanese, after a while of tasting it, uh, I like to change a little bit taste. Um, 
how do you eat your panettone? Like what's when when what's your advice? Like how do you at Christmas time? Do you just bite right into it? Uh, so uh, I like it like by by slice, but also like it like toasted the the next morning, so the butter melt and all the flavors comes up uh, much better, like uh, on a pan or like in a toaster, and mm -hmm. so it's a different kind of uh, experience or taste. You know, I was talking to Georgia Proya. I think I told you this before, and so she is from Rome and Panatone is for us, it's Natale, it's Christmas. In Milan, is it all year round? So we, when, since we opened uh, 10, 12 years ago, we start to make Panatone all year long because we, we believe in uh, the, uh, that Panatone is the dessert from Milan. So everybody who comes to visit the city should try it and should bring something home. Like when you go to Sicily, you have cannoli, or when you go to Paris, you try macaron. And for us, uh, for the Milanese people, it should be the same. Uh, so we, we like it to prepare it all the, all the year long. Do you have any suggestions on the, on the random, let's say the rare chance that there is panettone leftover the day after, like for, for Santo Stefano or the days after Natale? How do you, what, what are your suggestions for some great recipes with panettone? I tried the, the version with, uh, with, with uh, French toast, uh, which before of it, uh, for me, was uh, something uh, strange, honestly. Uh, but now, after, after I tried, uh, honestly, I think uh, it's, it's a very good thing for me. Uh, and so also, I will be in, uh, in Brooklyn uh, next week, and I will have a, a, cook, a show cooking. Uh, just making the, the French toast panettone. All right, okay, so here, I, th then I have to ask you a question because yeah. my husband and I argue about this all the time because I have tried, I, I like the idea of making French toast panettone. Yeah. And so what I like to do is I like to toast, toast the panettone and then I put it in the batter and then I put it, and then I cook it. Okay. Is that what you, is that what you do? Like, what do you, do you actually uh, toast the panettone or you don't even toast it? No, I used to do like uh, I put the, the the milk and eggs on the on the on the slice, and then uh, usually yeah, I cook the the slice. But after to put into the uh, so like, the milk and uh, so like yeah. you, like, you like you you bathe it in. Okay, oh, this is interesting. just a bit, just a bit, yeah. Do you eat panettone? Are there leftovers ever? Yeah, in this in this mode. It's a, it's a very good. Perfect, exactly. Yeah. Because if there's the left, similar French toast. That's the, I, I like doing that too. I, I, whenever I have leftover panettone, I love making panettone yeah. French toast. Or if you want, you can put in the pasta panettone. In the toaster? Yeah, yeah. in the toaster. But, but uh, I think it's, um, um, it's a sugar. It's a, it like dries up? Yeah. yeah. Too much, yeah. yeah. That's what, so. I did that once, and that's what my whole family said. They said it was like too dry. I I, I try in September uh, this technical uh, similar French toast is perfect for me. Um, any other recipes for panettone? Uh, we we can also make like a panettone millefoglie. I say like uh, you make uh, really thin slices of panettone and you press it and then you toast it in the oven and then you can make like a pastry cream or chantilly and you can use the the roasted slice uh, very crunchy of oh, panettone so like a millefoglie yeah you exactly oh, instead of puff pastry and it's i mean it's another good recipe to use like the leftovers of the panettone oh i love especially that especially because uh, the big problem with panettone at christmas here in italy is like it's the dessert that comes after like 10 different uh, uh, dishes of stuff to eat. So mm, when it's time to eat it, you know, nobody really enjoy it. So you should eat panettone before or after the Christmas day. Well, I, I can't wait. I have my tonka ready for me. I think I, I was, I was going to save it, but I feel like we're probably going to have it this weekend. Um, yeah, you should, you should finish it before. I'm going to finish it before so that I can get another one. There you have it. Panettone for Christmas, panettone in August, by the slice, covered in zabaglione as French toast, panettone all year round. Thank you, Giorgia and Casa Manfredi, Pierluigi and Roscioli, Ezio and Panificio Marinato, 
Nicola and Olivieri 1882, Giovanni and Pave for making this crazy episode happen. Buon Natale! Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Ciao Bella. The editor of Ciao Bella is Mastro. Production manager is Jenna Spray. If you're new to Ciao Bella, take a peek at ciaobella.co, our all-encompassing Italy-focused website, where you'll find insider insight on contemporary Italy. And sign up for our newsletter for new episodes and articles. Follow me on Instagram at Erica Firpo, and follow Ciao Bella on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you like to listen. Leave us a rating or comment. Ciao, ciao.